Florida Governor Ron DeSantis suspending a liberal prosecutor who he says neglected his duties in the law and wouldn't charge certain crimes. DeSantis took issue with Hillsborough County State Attorney Andrew Warren and his refusal to enforce laws against child sex change surgeries and abortion limits. We are going to make sure that our laws are enforced uh, and that no individual prosecutor puts himself above the law. And I can tell you the states and the localities that have allowed this to happen, uh, they are ruining the day. Emily, uh, this is a big deal. This is my home county, Hillsborough County. Uh, we had a lawless state attorney who thinks he's the legislature of Florida, who thinks he's the governor of Florida, not the prosecutor who doesn't enact law, but in fact, you know, prosecutes the very laws put in place on the books by Congress. That's right. And look, there's a difference between prosecutorial discretion and absolute abdication of duty. And specifically here, willful neglect, willful defiance of his duty. And as Governor DeSantis pointed out, it's part of the furtherance of his duties to suspend this prosecutor who won't prosecute. And they put in this order the fact that when you have a blanket refusal to prosecute a set of crimes, that that's not that discretion. Discretion is individualized. It's case specific. Mm. It's, it's it's that compassion that we, when we vote someone into that DA position, hope that they further. It's not an absolute refusal, as he did through that joint statement, to prosecute. And just final point, um, the, I, the first identity on Andrew Warren's Twitter was criminal justice reformer. So he didn't even identify as the prosecutor of that state, which, by the <laughs> way, the sole arm of the government in that prosecutorial realm is <clears throat> via the state attorneys. That's the only vehicle that the government has at that state level to prosecute crime. So when someone absolutely neglects their duties, when they demonstrate that incompetence as set out in that order, then what other choice does the governor have? Exactly. And just to, um, for our viewers, the Florida law bans abortion after 15 weeks. There are exceptions, Laura, for life of the mother, et cetera. Also important to know, because these prosecutors will tell you otherwise, Women are not prosecuted who have abortions. That is a key tenet of the pro-life movement. These women are victims themselves. This is about doctors. It's about abortion clinics. It's about after 15 weeks, which we know in a Wall Street Journal poll, 48% of Americans support, over 43% against. And what this lawless state attorney did was tantamount to a functional veto of state law, is what Governor DeSantis said. You can't veto state law when yeah. you're a prosecutor. Well, your job, I mean, to Emily's point, is to actually enforce the laws. And this was a Soros-backed individual, um, this, this state attorney that we're discussing. And we've seen what the record is with these Soros-backed prosecutors. They often do not enforce the law. And if you're not willing to do your job, then you shouldn't have your job. And it was well within the rights of Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, to take this individual out and say, if you're not going to do what you're put in place to do, then why would you have your job here? Um, but Kaylee, I think you bring up a really good point. A lot of times people like to conflate the, the real situation with these laws. And the fact is no women are being prosecuted here. We're talking about doctors and people that are performing abortions. So don't let anybody else out there tell you differently, which they would like to do on the left and a lot of times in the mainstream media, no different than the voting rights bills and it has nothing to do with voting rights. And you know, all of the, the way that they conflate things uh, these days, I think that's a great All point. of the distortions, exactly yes. right. Harrison, it was more than just this law. Uh, the order also cites the fact that he was not prosecuting, let's say, misdemeanors of mm -hmm. fleeing law enforcement if the initial offense was just crossing a street or a bicycle. So in other words, just negating parts of law that he didn't like, criminal law included. So what I think is really interesting about this is that this is going to, this type of behavior from these Soros-backed DAs is going to encourage regular folk, citizens out there who maybe don't pay that much attention mm -hmm. to who those people are when they go in to vote, to really press in. Because if you have a DA that's yoked politically to the governor of the state, mm -hmm. particularly in this case, look at New York. We can't recall the DA, mm -hmm. right? So if Governor Hochul happens to like what's happening in New York, even though she complains about gun crime and plenty of people are getting stabbed and pushed down steps and everything else, yeah, she's probably not likely to suspend a liberal DA. Right. <laughs> okay? So people are going to have to pay attention to whom they vote for, Yeah. I think. And I think this draws people in to say, well, wait a minute. If something doesn't go right and it already is broken in crime, do I really want everybody on the same page if that page is what got us here in the first place? This could be a wide awakening for people on the left to say, I, I want some jagged edges here. I want some, I may have to look at what they did with Eric Adams. 
There were Republicans who switched parties so they could vote in the primary to make sure that he was there and not some of the more liberal candidates uh, who were running for mayor of New York. It's a great point. Look, yep. we have uh, a beauty of an attorney here, a DA called Alvin Bragg. Oh. And then you look at Gascon and all these guys. Look, take a page from the DeSantis playbook. If you're Governor Hochul, save yourself because you're destroying a city. She's not I mean, imagine. <laughs> not. Never play Monopoly with Alvin Bragg because nobody goes to jail. <laughs> it's just endless free parking. You know, they don't, he doesn't lock anybody up. But it drives me crazy because people portray crime as, you know, like a black and white issue. It's just a right or wrong issue. But the bigger issue is when it comes to all of these woke reforms, they're actually targeting minority communities. The reason I say that is because you're letting people out in the name of equity. But when you look at the high rate of recidivism mm. and the fact that 90% of violent crimes are committed against members of the same race, all you're really doing is hooking up the law breakers at the expense of the law abiders. That's the scam. So there's no world where the country's better off or equity is more evenly distributed by letting people out of jail for violent crime or any crime for that matter. So if you want to care about any race, which you should care about all of them, just lock up the bad guys. How did this become controversial? Speak so much truth. We should be governor failure. Oh, I'll never pass the background <laughs> check. I wrote that down. I'm going to quote you. On the hey, there focus. you go. I'm Stop you. letting people out in the name of of equity. It's, it matters. Jimmy Fela. I'm telling Jimmy. you, don't sleep on the white boots. Bring in the fire. I'm Jimmy for governor. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.